Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the goddess Venus and the mythology associated with her. And this is not just any old video because this video is specifically for you if you're interested in learning astrology and how the goddess and the planet Venus, um, like what it means in a chart if you're looking at it and how the significations came up for Venus. Like where did that even come from? So I'm gonna go into that today. If you are not here for the astrology, don't worry. I'm going to give you some good mythology stuff. Some of it you probably have never heard before or haven't heard the associations. Regardless, um, I'm going to get into like the with the astrology part. I'm going to put up a glyph somewhere up here, which is a symbol for the goddess Venus. And it looks like a little woman. And so I, when you look at that symbol, when you look at that glyph, I want you to remember these stories and I want that to inspire you to understand what it is that the goddess Venus means in your life when you're reading either your chart or someone's chart, you're like looking at transits um, to help you understand the associations. Um, if you don't know me yet, my name is Valentine Lister. I'm a professional astrologer and tarot card reader. On this channel, I teach about astrology, tarot. I do a weekly astrology and tarot forecast to give you a prediction and some advice on the week ahead. Um, I also, also offer readings at this time. So if you want to get in on that, you can go to my website, valentinelister.com. Okay, getting into the stories, um, Venus is also associated with the name Aphrodite. Aphrodite is the Greek name. I'm going to use Venus because if we look at an astrology chart, we're going to call that planet Venus. And she was also an Italian goddess. Yes, like Italians aren't just like Roman or Greek. There actually were tribes of Italians. And um, she was the Italian goddess of gardening. So she's associated with flowers and beautiful things and things growing and being fertile and creating things and like the like the fertility, the abundance of things actually growing. Um, she's associated with green for that money or like um, if you're in nature and you see most of the things that grow and are fertile in nature, like if you go outside in the woods, they're green. Um, so green is associated with her because she's a benefic, she helps things grow. And Jupiter is also another benefic associated with the color green. She's also associated with the stone lapis lazuli. You probably can't see it here, but it's blue. Um, and you know, you know, she's associated with the finer things in life, okay? So how was Venus born? Well, this is a very famous story. Uh, you probably heard this one. So after Jupiter castrated uh, Uranus, or, oh shoot, it's not Jupiter. After Saturn castrated Uranus, um, which will be coming up in the Saturn video, his genitals fell into the sea. Saturn threw his genitals into the sea. And from that sea foam arose and a maiden with god a maiden goddess with roses under her feet were born so this is like part of the myth that i didn't really get when i was young and um didn't understand but venus was actually created from genitalia and semen and so like the anatomy of the body that creates desire so venus is associated with pleasure desire, um, like very sexual desire and the things that we long for and lust after. They also talk about her. She's like associated with the whispers of girls, the smiles, deceit, sweet pleasure, gentle delicacies of love, like making love. So this is interesting because a lot of times I hear, I'm, I'm a traditional astrologer. I'm a Hellenistic astrologer. I use medieval. And the interesting thing is I hear, you know, like I learned modern astrology growing up and I learned how Mars is about sexual desire, but that's not true. What you desire is showed by your Venus sign. Venus literally was born from the, the anatomy of desire, the genitalia. So that should be a clue. And it's also a clue on the fertility. When we get to Mars, we'll talk about more about Mars. Mars is able to get Venus what she wants. It's like Mars is about how do we get those things? How do we go after those things? And so Venus is like, she did have a secret love affair for Mars. And um, so the first thing um, with like Aphrodite's husbands, so, like first of all, she had many love affairs. She's associated with desire. She's associated with marriage, but she's not associated with fidelity. When she's, that makes a nice aspect to Saturn, 
that's where she's like very loyal and like doesn't cheat right um but otherwise she was a cheater like let's be real so she married um the god vulcan i think she was like obligated it was like an arranged marriage but she secretly desired mars so that kind of speaks to like vulcan he was like the um i think he was like the iron worker woodworker but he was very crafty with his hands and he was a very stable very stable influence right and so a lot of times with Venus signs, with Libra or Taurus, um, Venus rules Libra and Taurus, we think of Venus as like um, chilling, very pleasant, very nice. And that is her like go-to, right? Because she married Vulcan. So she's like very centered, grounded, good with like things being created that are nice, living in the lap of luxury. But she secretly desires Mars. She secretly desires going after things forcefully and aggressively but she doesn't do that she has mars do her dirty work for her she gets things to come to her by being something of desire and having men and whoever desire her so um yeah there was a story like the biggest story with her and vulcan was just like she got caught in bed with mars this was not so not so great and, you know, Mercury and Neptune were there and they were just like laughing. They're like, who wouldn't want to get it on with Venus? Like when they caught her, because Vulcan actually, he put like handcuffs around them to catch them in the act. And like um, Neptune and Mercury helped talk her out of, talk Vulcan out of, you know, really like torturing them or anything. Like, why don't you take it easy on them? So there's something about Venus that is very likable where people will defend her because it's just the beauty of her. It's like, how could anybody resist? Um, like having understanding for our desires and having a little leeway if we go like, you know, away from things that are like more truthful. Um, but in that myth, um, so actually it was the sun or Helios who, or Apollo, who told Vulcan about what happens with Venus. And so that's the interesting thing. Venus is also one of those planets that stays pretty close to the sun. It's more around like 60-ish so degrees, give or take. I could be off. Um, not good with math. But um, so Venus stays very close to the sun. She goes into retrogrades more frequently than other planets and she goes combust, meaning under the sun. And so Venus does her thing. She follows her desires. But in this like, like earthly plane in being a human, um, we are called to see if our desires match up with what our soul is calling us to do with our ability to have integrity and to be honest um so if we get too carried away by our desires there is a point where we will be called down on us um people will find out the truth and so um yeah there's that also with her being so close to the sun you know that makes me think about that there is a certain amount of divinity in beauty like having something that's beautiful appear before you um, is the image of heaven on earth. And it may be surface level, but that surface level can really get us through um, immense pain and suffering. And remember that Mars loves Venus. So Mars, the god of destruction, who is okay with chaos and like killing people and war and working hard, um, does find comfort and solace in being with Venus in being able to see beauty. I mean, you think of soldiers and they see a beautiful woman, right? It's like they're fighting a war and they can have a picture of a beautiful woman on their bed that they barely even know. And that can get them through and that can give them hope. Um, so we don't want to downplay a lot of the a lot of beauty or superficial beauty because there is something about us that gets us through life and this is actually a nice segue into the next myth of pygmalion so um basically with the myth of pygmalion um the women of cyprus refused to acknowledge venus's divinity and so she turned them all into prostitutes and that really speaks about venus like if we deny our desires um our desire can come, become distorted and really take us over and make us like do things that maybe compromise ourselves or like are looked down upon um and so so there was one guy like so everybody in cyprus is a prostitute now and pygmalion was this guy who was repelled by them he was like that's base that's dirty whatever i want like a like a nice girl a nice woman 
Um, and so he sculpted the perfect woman. A little bit creepy. He, like, had this statue, and he treated the statue like it was his wife. And he, you know, hung out with it, cuddled with it. Super weird. So there was this festival to Venus, and he prayed to Venus to make her into a real woman. He worked on this statue nonstop to just perfect it. And so she granted his wish. So this speaks about um, Venus's devotion to beauty, like, um, like her love of beauty and her honoring of people who create beauty and see the beauty in art and creation um, and in love, in the value of love and desire and really having dedication towards this desire. So really it talks about Venus and her relation to um, like to the arts and to creativity. So Venus rules the fifth house in a chart and that is associated with um, creation. This is like traditional astrology. And so this is actually how it was until um, these ancient texts got lost. So um, she rules desire, creativity, leisure, recreation. And so when we find the beauty and joy in those things and we honor those things, um, Venus honors us with partnership, marriage, being connected to the things that we love and find beauty in. Okay, so the next myth is where Aphrodite falls in love with Adonis. Um, and in this myth, she's completed with the Phoenician goddess Astarte. And this is actually associated with the myth of Pisces when, when I get to that one. So she fell in love with Adonis, who was a human, and she warned him. She knew ahead of time that he was going to die in a hunt. And so she kept warning him, don't go on this hunt. And he's like, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to not look manly. I'm going to say it the nice way. And so he went out on this hunt and he died. He got killed by a boar. And so Venus was so upset. She started grieving and she wailed with just like pain and grief. And then she turns his blood into a flower. And so um, this speaks to how also Venus, again, can turn pain and suffering into something beautiful. Um, it also talks about the, the seasons of life. So um, in a variation of this myth, Adonis um, is actually her son and she fights with Persephone over him. So Venus will have one part of the year, Persephone another. So when he's down underground, um, all of the vegetation dies. When he's up on the earth, all of the flowers and the vegetation grows. So um, it also is an explanation of the cycles and the seasons of life and how Venus is associated again with fertility and things growing and the harvest growing um, and things really being fertile. So even things like children or creating money. All right, with the next myth, I think this one is funny. Venus, um, so Venus really liked to talk crap about people. She liked to make people fall in love and she thought it was so funny. And she did this to the other gods and goddesses. She made them fall in love with people humans whatever and she's like i'm the most powerful goddess because i like um get people to desire and fall in love with people and it completely overtakes them and they kind of go crazy like with the with this with her power um when she takes over and so zeus jupiter he he was like okay i'm gonna put you in your place venus and he made her fall in love with a human named anxious and so this is actually also like similar to the myth associated with pisces but she falls in love with Anchises and she's super embarrassed because she's always like talking crap about people and now people can talk crap about her. So she had a lot of shame and guilt over this. Um, but anyway, regardless, she desired him. So she seduced him um, and she took on the form of a mortal and then she revealed herself later. And they had a son named Aeneas who fought in the Trojan War and he was one of the Trojan heroes in the Iliad. Um, so basically, she, you know, she falls in love with a human and she has a kid with him. She can no longer taunt people who fall in love with humans. Um, so it talks about like um, with Venus, um, she's associated with gossip and talking crap about people. She's associated with love of humans and humanity, finding beauty in everyday things or creating beauty in everyday things. Um, and also having a sense of humility. Like there is um, a part of Venus that does that is humble and is like, okay, I don't know. Like, um, I think I should do this or I think I shouldn't, you know, like where she doubts herself.
The next myth does speak to Venus's power, though. So um, with that Trojan War I talked about with the Iliad, Venus actually helped start that. Um, so basically, um, there was a wedding that was happening. And Eris, the god of discord, she thought it'd be funny to just create chaos. And she threw an apple, like a gold, I think it was a golden apple, into the wedding. And it said, for the most beautiful of the goddesses, right? And so Athena, Hera, and Venus started to fight about who was the most beautiful and they had this boy this shepherd boy Paris who was super cute too um decide who was the most beautiful and so he, they like got undressed for him and everything they were like like in the nude and he was like examining their bodies and stuff super weird in the myth and so they all offered him things to kind of sweeten the pot and be like, if you choose me as the most beautiful, I'll give you this gift. So Athena was like, if you choose me as the most beautiful, I'll make sure you're always victorious in battle, any war that you're in or fight, you're going to win it. Um, and Hera promised Paris um, that he would be the master of all Asia. He would be able to own the continent of Asia if he chose her. And then Venus was like, if you choose me, I'm going to give you the most beautiful woman in the world. And so he was like, of course, I want the most beautiful woman in the world. Duh. So like that was his priority. And that's that's what people want. Right. So. Um, so basically, you know, the most beautiful in the world was Helen of Troy and she was married. And, you know, um, Venus helped. Paris steal her and it started the Trojan War from, um, you know, the Homeric hymns, the Iliad, and later there was the Odyssey, but that, but Paris was like less, there was less of that, that was mostly focused on the Iliad. Um, you know, so it talks about like, um, kind of like vanity and like, um, but also desire, like desire for beauty, how that can be like the most powerful force in the world. Our desires, our desire for pleasure and to find the right partner can completely overtake us. And it does have a power beyond just like wanting um, like career success or being able to do battle with people. The next myth relates to Cupid and Psyche. So Cupid is, uh, in most of the myths, uh, Venus's son. And so there was this beautiful maiden Psyche who is humble and she resembled like this beautiful goddess. Like she was almost like competition for the goddess Venus, but she was super humble. She didn't look at herself that way. And that made her even more special. And so it really sucked for Psyche. Everybody like hated her. Everybody was like out to get here. If you know about the 12th house and hidden enemies or she had a lot of frenemies, basically. Um, she really went through it. So basically, um, I think, I think it was like Venus sent Cupid to kill Psyche and like it was kind of dark and then anyway so cupid falls in love with psyche and so he wants to take her as his wife but he's secretive about it because he knows venus is gonna you know have a problem with it and probably take it out on psyche more than him um so he takes her as his lover and you know they're lovers in secret and finally, Psyche's like, I have to see your face. Like, I love you so much. So she looks at his face. Um, her sisters, who were frenemies, they sucked. They told her to look at his face. And then he's like, well, I can't see you anymore. You looked at my face. So Psyche has to go through all of these trials and challenges um, that Venus gives her to, in order to win Psyche back. And eventually she does because um, people love her and love her spirit. So in this myth, um, it talks about Venus as she can be very jealous and possessive and she, you know, kind of makes me think of like the queen from Snow White, like um, wants to be the most beautiful of all and will crush the competition um, if she feels threatened. So it's kind of like speaking about the beauty contest um, in relation to Venus and she does have that aspect to her. The next myth is there's like an argument or there's a, there's a battle between Artemis and Venus. So basically... Venus is about beauty. It is about surface level beauty and how that soothes the soul. And it's about 
Uh, and it's about enjoying life, enjoying your desires, enjoying creativity, um, you know, finding beauty in life, all the things I talked about. And Artemis is all about like, I don't like that superficial shit. I want to go out and like find my truth. I want to be able to go out and hunt and um, protect what's true and right and real in the world. And so they had a battle and basically it was over this guy named Hippolytus and he hated Venus. He was like, I'm worshiping Artemis. And he would not, he was like, I find women disgusting. He, he was a woman hater, basically. He hated them. Um, so he wanted to stay celibate. He wanted to be a priest, wanted to do his thing. And Venus was just so disgusted by this that she's like, I'm going to get you. Like, I, like I'm going to get you for hating women, hating desire, hating sex. There's nothing wrong with this. So you're going down. Um, and so he was a loyal devotee of Artemis. Artemis tried to protect him. However, Venus made a deal with Jupiter to basically um, make, him, make him fall in love or make his stepmother fall in love with him. So um, his stepmother was named Phaedra and she was married to Theseus. And so Phaedra fell in love with Hippolytus and she was so embarrassed about it, destroyed by it, distraught that um she killed herself and she she blamed it on hippolytus so somehow hippolytus got indicated in this and so he was punished he basically was like punished after this or that by theseus and so this speaks about like venus as being vindictive and so it also just speaks about like if we don't follow our desires in life and we like look down on people who um you know love their sexuality love beautiful things you know love to create love their children um just love laughing and dancing and all the beautiful things in life if we look down on that um that there's there will be a part in life where we're humbled because we all desire things in life that we think we shouldn't desire and if we deny that eventually it's going to come back to bite us in the ass so we should have humility around our de desires um and like shouldn't judge other people for them because there's going to come a time where our desires come and we're like we're going to be associated with them or like some type of desire or people desire us um and it may come to bite us in the butt basically all right hope you enjoyed this mythology of venus please leave uh questions comments below and this is a quick reminder to like subscribe hit the bell to be notified for when i release my next video share it out if you want people to know these myths and how they're associated with astrology and i will see you guys in the next video if you like this video make sure to like subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for whenever i release a new video every single week